Welcome back to Kemp Fitness Professional, guys. This is a hybrid workout. This is circuit A, and I am going through the second round here. I didn't record the first round, but I am doing a barbell hip thrust and a low incline alternating dumbbell press and then barbell rollouts. This is a really nice setup because all you need is the bar, a pair of dumbbells, and a bench, and essentially a pad for your knees, depending on the type of flooring that you have. But the idea with these hybrid workouts is to make them as minimalist and convenient as possible, so that way you're not running around the gym, you're not taking up a ton of equipment, and especially if you have a home setup, this is nice because it doesn't take up a lot of space and you don't need a ton of stuff. So. This is my second round through, and I'm doing six reps on all three exercises for three sets each. So I go barbell hip thrust for six reps. Then I go right into my alternating low incline press for six reps each arm, and then I go into six rollouts. Then I repeat the circuit without resting at all, six hip thrusts, six presses, six rollouts, and then one more time through again without resting at all between six hip thrusts, six chest presses, and six rollouts. So I'm just going to take you guys through this circuit and give you a few pointers as we go. Since we're here, let's start with the rollouts. The main key with the rollouts is you want to avoid extending the lumbar spine. What that means is you don't want to sag the low back or the hips. So to do this, you have to really focus on tucking your butt underneath you, tucking your pelvis, tucking your tailbone down. So you squeeze your glutes really hard and also you cinch down the front of your rib cage. So you're trying to crunch your rib cage down to the front of your pelvis like you're flexing your six pack. I use the cue uh, crunching an accordion. So as I roll out, I'm really, really emphasizing that crunch down in the rib cage using the abs and the tuck under with the hips by squeezing the glutes. That will help you to keep all of the tension on the core and avoid any kind of uh, excess extension in the spine causing a lot of low back pain there. And it also gets quite a bit of the lats because as the bar comes out you have to pull it back so it's almost like a lat pull down a straight arm pull down now with the hip thrusts the main key here is the exact same cues for the rollout i want to tuck my glutes underneath me here and get that little bit of pelvic tilt so again i'm trying to avoid extending the lumbar spine and you'll see that in a lot of the programming that i do you'll see a lot of complementary movement patterns where it's a totally different pattern or a different movement, I should say, but a lot of the same thinking goes into the similar movements. So that way you're getting a lot of the same stimulus in different ways. You're really working a lot of the same muscle groups throughout the same session. So you want to really tuck those glutes under on the hip thrust and crunch the rib cage down to the front of the pelvis by squeezing your abs at the top of each one of those hip thrust reps. On the alternating incline press, I like a lower incline. This is like one of my favorite chest exercises. It feels really good. I'll get back to that when we come back to the next round. But um, going back to the rollout here, I am um, using an AirX pad to put my knees on. And then I'm also, if you'll notice, I actually have my heels underneath the bench. I'm not actively focusing on lifting my heels up into the bench and having it hold me there. But the nice thing about having the bench there, even though the bench doesn't weigh very much, I still, as I fatigue, you'll notice, especially on the, the last couple reps, my heels do lift up and I use my hamstrings to help assist me in pulling the bar back. So it's almost like 10% of a Nordic hamstring curl as my core and my lats fatigue to help me bring the bar back to center. So that's a nice compliment to go along with the hip thrusts because the hip thrusts take the uh, hamstrings through their range of motion with a bend in the knee 
here I'm actually straightening the knee so I'm getting more of a contraction on a long hamstring versus a contraction on a short hamstring. Nerdy details aside, it's just another nice little touch on the posterior chain with this combination. So the rollouts really emphasizing posterior pelvic tilt and resisting extension in the spine are a great combination to go with these hip thrusts where I'm doing the exact same thing and then I get that little extra spice on the hamstrings with the uh, Nordic curl assist. But I'm not trying to emphasize that at all. It just happens to help in that exact situation. So you'll notice I'm doing a little bit of a bounce here on my hip thrust. All that's doing is keeping a little bit of time under tension on the glutes so it makes the glutes stay extra contracted at the top so you get a little bit more work done out of that the other key points i want to point out about the hip thrust are i have a vertical shin at the top of the hip thrust a 90 degree angle at the knee and my feet are hip width apart toes pointed straight forward so i'm just stacking my angles nicely there a uh, couple of other key points about the low incline chest press here. The bell that stays up, you want to really try to push your arm through that bell to the ceiling. Don't let that elbow bend and that bell drop. So as you're kind of thinking about pulling one bell down to the chest, you're pushing the other one up to the ceiling. The incline can vary here. This is just one click up on this bench, which is around a 15 to 20 degree incline. Anywhere from 15 to 30 degrees incline is my favorite. I just seem to get the best feeling in my chest and it feels the most comfortable on my shoulder. So that's why I prefer that. And also with the alternate, alternating press, it really allows you to get a lot of stretch on the pec when you're coming down on one side. You can really emphasize thinking about contracting one pec at a time, getting a good focus on that contraction. And also you have to really resist rotation in the core because when the one dumbbell comes away from the center of gravity and the other one stays there, it's not that counterbalance. So you have to think with your core about avoiding rotating and falling off the bench. So you just get a little extra core out of it too. So I really like the alternating chest press, especially from that low incline position. So I started off the first round, I went three sets of five of each exercise. It took me seven and a half minutes. I rested for four minutes between. I added a rep to each, so I did six for the last three sets and then rested for another five minutes between before going on to circuit B.